So question two then from the 2012 Advanced Higher Applied Maths Mechanics. A projectile question. So a stuva question, as they're sometimes known. That's just the case of applying whichever of the equations use the quantities of distance, time, initial velocity, final velocity and acceleration will get you towards the answer. What does it say? The greatest height reached by a projectile is one-tenth of its range on, a, on horizontal ground. So the highest it gets to is one-tenth of the range it finally reaches. Calculate the angle of projection. So the technique here would be Let's get an equation for the height, maximum height, in terms of v and theta, for the range, in terms of v and theta, and then equate them, and hopefully get theta. So normally you do it in two parts, resolving it vertically. We would have this. Now, vertically, the vertical component opposite the angle will be the sine. So for the vertical component, you've got the initial velocity is v sine theta, you could find then the time it takes to reach the top, which is for the velocity, the final velocity to be zero. So I just want something involving T, U and V. We'll have to call in the A, so that's what I'll be using. V equals U plus AT. So it will reach the top when V is zero. Don't know if that required a statement. The initial velocity is the capital V I'm using to distinguish it from that will be V sine theta. The acceleration will be minus G and the time's what I want. How long does it take to get to the top? So then I can work out the distance to the top. So that means the first equation I've got is taking that across. GT equals and then dividing by G. T is V sine theta over G. And that was the first mark. Next mark was, well, let's get the height. How high would you get? So I want another equation. I want one with S in it. Well, the obvious one there would be this. So to get that height, the height of the top, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Just choose the appropriate equation that contains all the things you know. So what would the height be? Well, the initial velocity was V sine theta. The time taken was this thing here, so it's another V sine theta upon G, a half of, now A is acting downwards, so it's minus G times, and there we go again for T, squaring this V squared, sine squared theta over G squared. Notice these two are just about the same, they both go V squared, they both go sine squared, and they both have got, without cancelling over G, except that's a whole one and that's a half one, so the final answer it will be a half of that. It'll be v squared sine squared theta over 2g. And I know that that's equal to one tenth of r. Now horizontally. Now am I allowed just to assume that it'll take the same time to come back down and say that horizontally the time will be this? The time will be two times v sine theta upon g because that was a mark, that was a mark, that was a mark. Now there's a mark for this, which, which you would think would be fair enough. But if not, you would have to, for this mark, say, well, what's the total time of flight? It's how long it would take to go up and come back down and hit the ground. So again, I'd be using height because I know the height would be zero when it hits the ground. So using this one again, I would say S equals UT plus a half AT squared. What's the time of flight? Well. S will be zero. U was V sine theta. What was the time of flight? I don't know. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Minus a half G T squared. There's a little quadratic to solve for T. One of the answers will be zero. The other answer will be when it hits the ground again. So doubling that and bringing that over, I'll have G T squared, bringing it over and doubling it, minus 2 V sine theta T equals zero, taking that common factor of T, gt minus 2v sine theta equals 0, and there's your two answers. Either t equals 0, or t equals, that'll be 2v sine theta, but crushed, divided by g. So, I don't know. 
If that was a mark going through all that, and that was a mark going through all that, maybe they won't give you the mark just for making that obvious statement. So then, that would be the third mark. Don't see what's wrong with that, though. Then let's get the distance, let's get the range. So how far will it travel in that time? There we go again. S equals UT plus a half AT squared, except there's no acceleration. So the distance will be S will equal U, now this time, the speed across the way is the component next to the angle, that's the cosine, that'll be V cos theta times the time of flight, which is this, 2V sine theta upon G, and that of course is zero, plus zero. Let's get into that wee bit, just to finish this bit off. So we've got S equals, and that'll be 2V squared sine theta cos theta over G. And that would have to equal the range R. And there's my second equation. So that was my time of flight. It's getting a bit messy here. That was a mark, probably with that big extended working for it. And that was a mark. Let's get them up here for some space. Now we can equate them R for R. So this side has got 10. 10 V squared sine squared theta over 2G would equal, and that side's just what it says. And it's theta that I want, so let's put the thetas on one side and everything else on the other. So that means I'll leave the sine squared theta and put sine theta cos theta underneath. And that's quite relieving because you might have been worried about the sine theta cos theta business, but obviously that just cancels out to tan. Equals, and then leaving what we've got on this side, we've got a 2 squared over g, and then across we've got a 2g and a 10v squared. And just about everything cancels out there. The g's go, I've got 4 over 10, the v squared's go, so that just comes down to 2 fifths. Sines cancel, leaving a sine over cos, so that's tan theta. And there you are. Tan theta is two fifths, so theta is going to be inverse tan of two fifths. So the angle is going to be, pressing the buttons, 21.801, blah, blah, blah. So 21.8 degrees. And that was the fifth mark. Now, that was actually quite a palaver for five marks going through all that. And all the question did say was, the greatest height reached is one-tenth of the range, calculate the angle of projection. That's all it said. It didn't mention any specific technique. And it is applied maths here, rather than a physics exam. And it just strikes me after going through two boards of that, there might have been a simpler way to get the answer to this. So, what about an alternative? Let's just get this. We know that this is a parabola. Let's just get the equation of the parabola, because we know where it cuts the axis, and we've got a point on it here. And we can get the gradient of the tangent at the origin, which will give you the angle of the initial velocity. So what would the equation of that be? Well, y equals, it cuts at zero, so that'll be x, there would have been a factor x. It cuts at r, so the factor x minus r. There could have been some common multiple. How can we find that common multiple? Let's take this point here. You know that the top of the parabola occurs halfway along. So that means it happens at the point, which would be a half r, and it gets to height of a tenth r. Put that into it. One tenth of r is k times x, which is a half r. Maybe I need to put that over to. Of whoops, I didn't mean to put that in. Of a half r minus r. Well, that's negative a half r, so that's negative a quarter r squared. I'll just put it down. One tenth of r is negative a quarter r squared k, which means you can get k then. K is going to be taking that across. K will be negative 4 over 10 is 2 fifths, and the R squared going underneath means it's actually 2 over 5 R. So here's my equation. Y equals negative 2 upon 5 R, X, X minus R. Now, get the gradient of the origin by differentiating that. So you can either differentiate that using the product rule, or maybe I'll just multiply it out first. So I've got negative 
2x squared over 5r, and then I've got plus, the r's will cancel, 2x upon 5. Oh, well, let's get the gradient. The gradient will be given by the derivative, divide by dx, which will be negative 4x over 5r plus 2 fifths. What's the gradient at the start when x is 0? If x is 0, the gradient will just be 2 fifths. The gradient's given by the tangent of the angle. The tangent of the angle is 2 fifths, which means, as before, the angle is 21.8. Now, that seems so much simpler if it's allowed. I have no idea if it's allowed. Who knows what they're thinking in the marking schemes? But you're certainly given that in a situation with no air resistance and so on, this projectile will follow a parabolic path, so its equation should be a quadratic equation. So I don't see what would be wrong with doing that. Well, there it is as an alternative anyway.